Welcome to the seventh and last Sunday of Easter for this year, 2019. Our readings for today are Acts chapter 1, verses 12 to 26, short account of what the disciples did between Jesus' ascension and the day of Pentecost. Uh, Revelation chapter 22 and kind of a quick overview of the entire chapter and John 17 verses 20 through 26. Our hymns for today include a hymn of glory let us sing an ascension song on Christ's ascension now I build uh, at uh, Bethel at Zion we'll sing Christ sits at God's right hand and um, at both churches we'll finish with glorious things of thee are spoken our uh, children's hymn for today is king of kings and lord of lords grace to you and peace from god our father and the lord and savior jesus christ risen and ascended amen we have come to the end of the book of revelation it's also the end of the Bible, the end of, of God's revealing himself to us in the written word. Uh, chapter 22 has essentially two sections. Uh, the first section continues the vision that we heard last week of the New Jerusalem, the city of God, where we will live for the rest of eternity uh, once we, we depart this life, this earth. Uh, last week we heard about the streets of gold and uh, the crystal walls and the pearly gates, the famous pearly gates. Uh, this week uh, we read about, uh, hear about the river through the middle of the city coming off out of the throne and uh, the tree of life uh, somehow on both sides of the river, uh, maybe right out of the middle of it somehow uh, with fruit for every season. Now most cities uh, have well, all cities have some so, for, so, source of water. Uh, some of them are a major river. Uh, rivers were very important in the olden days, not just for water, but for transportation before trucks and trains. But, uh, but clean water is an essential element of life. You can't live very long without water. And many cities are limited by how much water is available for them. Uh, clean water to drink and to wash. Uh, New York City is on the Hudson River. Uh, Washington, D.C. on the Potomac. Uh, the Mississippi River runs through, uh, well, up from New Orleans, through Memphis, St. Louis, Minneapolis, and many other important cities along the way. And um, uh, Portland, our own beloved Columbia River, several cities along there. Uh, but, um, but, uh, and you, I could go on, you know, Europe and Asia, city, you know, big cities need big water, and big water usually comes from a river. And just as cities need clean water, they also need to get rid of the dirty water, right? Uh, so you need to send it downstream, uh, or, or clean it, or hopefully clean it first, dealing with it somehow. Here in Grand Coulee, we uh, had a famous spot called, that was uh, nicknamed the Poop Lagoon because the, they didn't treat it so much. They, they just ran the pipe down into the lake and uh, let it clean itself. Not the, it kind of stinky, right? Uh, a little known geography fact in, in Jerusalem, not on, the, not on the tourism sites, but Jerusalem had a sewer running under its street, under one of its main streets, out of the city into the Kidron Valley and down to the Dead Sea, the, the Jordan River. Uh, it's again not usually on the tourist uh, tour, but um, our sin is evident in our dirty, stinky, polluted, disease causing waste that we uh, have to get rid of. And uh, generally, blessedly, uh, that most of us don't have to think about it very much from day to day. Uh, most of it happens by modern technology uh, with inconvenience without much thought or effort by us. But oh boy, what a mess when something breaks and it starts to back up or, or you can't get rid of it, right? Uh, what a mess that makes. Doesn't take long. Uh, 
Some people think that their stuff doesn't stink. But in heaven, I, I don't think it, will, it won't stink. God doesn't tell us this directly, but in heaven there will be no more disease, no more death, uh, so it, I don't think it's going to be such a mess for us to deal with as it is for us today. Uh, it won't be tainted by sin. Now we are going to eat uh, the fruit of this tree of life, uh, every fruit in its season, and uh, there will be a never-ending marriage feast of the Lamb, talks about bread without price and wine. Um, if we're eating, we're still going to have to expel some waste. Uh, but I think it's going to be used as fertilizer for the beautiful gardens there. And without the sin, I don't think it's going to stink. And uh, we won't have to be afraid of bacteria and diseases and uh, all those the things that we have to be afraid of when we deal with those things today, which is probably something um, that you'd probably never worry about too much, but uh, unless you've had one of those moments, an accident that you've had to deal with, uh, especially if you're a parent with dirty diapers, uh, and heaven won't be a problem. Uh, that, like you fear those accidents today. Uh, we also look forward to the to more of uh, uh, the healing of the nations. It says that the tree, the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. No more racism or genocide. The sins of the past will be forgotten, forgiven, and healed. No more war, trade wars, or otherwise. Uh, nuclear war, none of that. Uh, the healing of the nations, we will be gathered together out of every nation from the ends of the earth uh, is one people, the, the bride of Christ, the marriage feast of the Lamb. Uh, the, the final ending, the second part of, our, of this chapter of our reading is the, is the promise, again, that He is coming and Jesus keeps His promises. He died and rose again on the third day, just as he said he would, just as he promised, and he is coming back. All the trouble of this life is going to be done and over. It will end. He will do it. There really will be a judgment and a separation of the sheep and the goats, the believers and the unbelievers. There really will be eternal suffering for those who choose to be separated from God and eternal blessings for those who trust in Him and His grace and mercy uh, that He, ch the people, ones, those He has chosen. And the more that we understand the effects of sin in our lives and in the world around us, the more anxious we are for Jesus to come. As, Jesus, as John said, Come quickly, Lord Jesus. Come and take away our pain and suffering. Come and take away death and disease. Come and end all sin and all the effects of sin. Wipe away every tear from our eyes. When we are aware of our sin, we realize that it really stinks. Uh, the more that God takes our sin away from us, helps us to experience a pure and holy life, not pure and holy as it will be in that day, but the more that, we, the more uh, that holy that we closer we get to holy, the more this, we can smell the stink of sin and the less we want to live in it. But there are other people who don't know the difference. They, they can live right in the middle of the sewer, next to the sewer, or, or in the landfill, um, and they don't even smell it anymore. Uh, some people that I saw in Guatemala, they, who, well, you might say they worked in the city dump, but they were, they were just scrounging surviving, looking for food, looking for anything of value. They, they thought they could make a better life in the city dump than out somewhere else doing a normal, regular job. Um, and they couldn't smell the stink anymore or any of the other dangerous things that they, that they were doing by living in that. Um, and they would have lived right there in the dump if they were allowed to. They used to. The, the government and the city decided <laughs> Finally, that that wasn't safe, and, and moved them out and put up a wall to keep them from living in there. Uh, they, uh, but they, um, many people 
in the world today, you know, maybe not living in the landfill, but living in sin in such a way that they, they can't even smell it anymore. They don't think that it stinks. Uh, uh, they, they don't, uh, they, they've gotten so used to the smell, um, they, can't, they can't tell the difference. They don't know. Right? We need to pray for them and help them get out of that, to know that there is a fragrant, beautiful, pure, holy life. Oh, God you know, can bring them to that. So don't lose your vision of God's holiness and the hope that you will, will live there in it, in holy and fullness and purity. He will make you holy as he has promised. In holiness and purity, there will be no more death, no more pain, no more suffering, no more tears. Uh, some people today um, think that's just part of life. They don't know the difference, but it is not. Pain and suffering is not part of life. Death is not part of life. When Jesus returns and sin is removed from us, life won't stink anymore. Never lose your vision and your hope for that. Hold on to that hope. Cry out with John, Come, Lord Jesus, come quickly. Take us out of this life. Save us from our sins. We can't wait to live in the new, holy, pure, beautiful, fragrant world that you have promised to us and you have prepared for us. Uh, and we know that it's coming because Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And you will rise again too. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.